Okay, thanks, Zach. Um, good morning, everyone, or afternoon, wherever you are. It's morning here. I'm going to be talking about embedding of hypercube graph on orientable surfaces. Um, I worked on this with Dr. Robert Franz Dostoff, University of Maine. Just going to. All right, there we go. So, started off with the idea of drawing um, certain graphs on surfaces with restrictions like no intersection except vertices or um, in such a way that you end up with exactly one component. So it was a homework problem, which was a motivation. Um, and it turns out there are more than one ways in which you can embed a graph into a surface. So the natural question to ask was, um, can we find all of them? So that turned out to be a more complicated question. Um, so instead of focusing on all embeddings, I decided to focus on the one that's on minimal genus surface and one on a maximal genus surface. And again, instead of working on K and N, um, I decided to work on hypercube graphs. So here's an example of three hypercube graphs, Q1, Q2, Q3. Um, it's exactly what you would think it is gonna be. Um, we are gonna label the vertices in a certain manner where connected vertices differ by exactly one bit or their, which is to say the Hamming distance is one. Um, and then we will be using the binary notation for the vertices um, throughout the stock, switching between binary and decimal. So that's the uh, convention that we're using for labeling our vertices. What's coming up is I'm gonna define what a rotation system is, a boundary walk algorithm, um, ABC rotation system that we came up with, um, something called an adjacent switch theorem, minimal embedding and the phase to maximal. So those are the main results that I'll be building up to and some conclusions and unanswered questions. Um, for basic idea, um, we'll be working with polygons a lot in this talk. So essentially gluing polygons gives you back surfaces. In our case, we will be gluing polygons with directed edges so that you not only recover the surface, but you also recover the graph that's embedded on that surface. Mm. And then one of the results that we will be using is um, the V minus E plus F is two minus two times the genus. Um, where V minus E plus F is called the Euler characteristic. Now this comes in super handy for finding the limits, lower and upper limits for what the genus of the embedding of certain graphs are. Um, all right, so the one way of representing um, the embeddings is to draw it, which is really complicated and it's not always possible. So we developed another way in which we can talk about these embeddings called the rotation system. So right here I have is um, Q2 embedded on a sphere, um, showing the front and the back side of the sphere. Uh, let's see, so that's one representation. Uh, another way to represent it is, is by looking at the edges around each vertex. So let's say I look at vertex uh, zero, um, going in a counterclockwise direction, I can, make a list of all the other vertices it's connected to. So it starts with two, one, followed by four, which means um, I can encode this by saying that the rot rotation system around zero is two, one, four. Similarly, um, if I look at one, it's always counterclockwise. So it's zero, three, five, or three, five, zero, five, zero, three, um, doesn't matter, uh, as long as it's counterclockwise. So essentially this is a rotation system, which is, um, it tells you the ordering, the counterclockwise ordering of the edges around each vertex. So once you have the drawing or the embedding, you can find the rotation system by just looking at each vertex. So obviously the next thing is, if I am given the rotation system, am I able to recover the embedding? So we can do that. And that's called um, finding the boundary walk. So essentially the rotation system is gonna give us um, the polygons which when glued together 
they give us back the surface in which the graph is embedded. Now here's an example of a rotation system right here. Um, slight change in notation here. The first entry, zero through seven, is just a vertex, and the remaining three entries in each array is a, a rotation system. So for each, each vertex, we have an approach edge, and we have a departure edge, and the enclosed area we're talking about. So you can start the walk at any edge. Say I start at the edge zero one. Now to find the next entry, or to find where I should go next, I'm going to look at um, the rotation system entry for one. And now I'm looking for zero because that's my approach edge. Now, because everything is counterclockwise, the next edge or the departure edge has to be the next entry in the rotation system, which is three, which gives me the next entry. And then I repeat this process. That is, I look at um, the rotation system at three, and then I look at the entry before three, which is one. That's my approach edge. And my departure edge is going to be the next uh, the number. Repeat for seven, uh, six, four. So we repeat this until the first two entries repeat because that means um, we've come back to where we started, giving us a polygon. So in this case, um, it's length six where it starts repeating. Now, um, to find the remaining walk, we know we haven't. For example, the edge zero two is not appearing on the boundary wall. So we can start with zero two and then it ends. And we keep continuing this um, until we have covered all the possible um, edges. Now, the total boundary walk length is always gonna be two times the number of edges because um, four zero would be different from zero four because in one case, the, the approach edge and the departure edge get interchanged. Okay, so that's how you make the boundary walk. Um, so in this particular case, the rotation system gives us four hexagons. So that can be glued together to get the surface that the graph lives on. Let's see how um, using the calculation for V minus C plus F gives me zero, um, which gives me that the Euler characteristic is zero. Hence, it should be living in a genus one surface. So let's look at these polygons. Um, here's front and top and bottom of the torus. Um, that's the first polygon, which sort of an attack, and the interior corresponds to that part. Um, same with the green region, the purple, and the gray region. So, what we have is a, a bunch of polygons with directed edges. And if we follow the instruction for gluing these polygons, um, preserving the direction, we're going to recover a one whole torus with Q2 on it. And the Q2 will be such that it has a rotation system that was there in real life. OK. Now, uh, we defined a specific rotation system for our purposes. We call it the ABC rotation system, which stands for alternate bit change rotation system. Um, the process is very simple. So let's say I'm in Q4, or sorry, Q3. Uh, no, that's right, Q4. And I'm on vertex number 10. So I write 10 in binary form, which is 1010. Zero, zero. The first entry in the rotation system is obtained by um, complementing the rightmost bit. So I get one zero one one. The next entry is obtained by complementing the bit to the left of the rightmost, and so on. Now, because this is Q four, the each edge has a degree of, or each vertex has a degree of four. Just make sure I have the right rotation system for each vertex. So that's just the alternate bit change rotation system. Or we can also define something called the reverse alternate bit change rotation system, when instead of complementing from the Right, we start complementing from the leftmost bit. Um, so the ABC rotation system gives a nice embedding um, all components of size 2n. So that's why the previous example, we got a bunch of hexagons for Q3, right? So 2n, six types. Um, 
one more thing that we need to know um, before the main result is something that theorem. So the question is, let's say I start with this particular rotation system and I pick one of the vertex and I make one switch. How does that change the genus of the uh, embedding or if it does? So basically this theorem that we have here, um, which I won't be going to the proof, um, gives us a control over one of three things that can happen. Either there is no change in the number of phase, meaning no change in the genus, or um, the three, you have three phases that combine to form one. So the genus, uh, the number of phase decreases by two, or you have three phases that you start with and it breaks down into, oh, sorry, one phase and it breaks down into three phases. Um, so basically all we need to know is we have control over how we can make the switches to make polygons. Um, so one example is here, you know, before switching, there are three different phases and after switching, they combine to form one single phase. So similarly, we have control over breaking one phase into three or having no change at all. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So a change in rotation system, one single change, um, increases the genus by one, decreases by one, leaves it unchanged. It also tells us that if you if one embedding has an odd number of phase, then all embedding has odd, and if one has even, then all has all of them have even number of phases. That's just um, a result of the adjacent. The minimal embedding is the surface is a of a graph on a surface of minimal genus. It's also called the genus of graph. So what is known as theorem due to Lowell and Frank Hattery is that the genus of an n cube is given by expression. Um, so what we do is we provide an explicit uh, way of finding the embedding itself. So the, the bound can be found by using the relation V minus E plus F equals two minus two G and substituting values for V, E and F for um, Q and now, one important thing here is for minimal embedding, we want there to be as many phases as possible. So the theoretical uh, maximum phase corresponds to having each phase being as small as possible, which in the case of a hypercube would be something of site four. Um, I'm gonna skip this. So having this is just difference between two binary strings. It just comes up in the so what we did was we define a four cycle rotation system. Um, you start with any vertex, say vertex zero, you give it the ABC rotation system, and then vertices which are at an even hamming distance from zero also have the ABC rotation system, but the rest of the vertices, that is odd hamming distance, have the reverse ABC rotation system. And it turns out that that gives us the minimal embedding. Um, sketch of the proof uh, right here, so we start with n vertex uh, the, with, with the vertex in binary notation. No matter what walk we start, because they differ by one bit, the aith bit is going to be complemented. Now, because this is an odd distance away, it's going to have the reverse ABC, which means we start complementing from the left towards the right. So the next entry is going to have the right bit AI plus one complemented. But this, is now an even having distance from the original vertex. So it's gonna have the ABC, which means that we start complementing towards the left. So AI switches back to its original value. And then this has a reverse ABC. So we switch the right one and we get back to where we started. So this basically shows you that um, all walks in this particular system are size four, which is what we said is required for the embedding to be minimal. So it's, um, all you have to do is just have ABC reverse ABC at different vertex and you get the minimal embedding. Some examples, the first one that we saw was three dimensional. Um, in the four dimensional case, it forms a nice lattice, which we will be coming back to later. So you got ABC reverse ABC, ABC reverse ABC. And what that is this? The minimal on um, genus one surface. We keep this picture in mind. We'll come back to this when we talk about maximal embedding. Okay. 
Maximal embedding is um, embedding of a graph on a surface of maximal genus. Every component is homeomorphic to an open disk, meaning you can't just add handles without there being anything there. Um, first of all, is to explore different kinds of um, maximum embedding. For maximal embedding, you have to have the least number of faces, which is theoretically is two for um, QN. Uh, it's two because of the Jason theorem, which said that um, genus, uh, the number of faces changes or, or include changes by, uh, by two, by two. So if you have even number, the least possible is two. So I look at some embeddings for uh, Q3. Um, this is one where you start with ABC and then you switch one vertex and you get two components of size 18 and six. Then you start with um, ABC on all of them. You switch for zero and one, you get another kind of maximal with 14 and 10 size. Then you make a switch at zero, one, and three, and you end up with something which has equal. So it's two components of size 12 each. And finally, if you switch at zero and five, just this nice little um, embedding where one face is as small as possible and the other is as large as possible. Now, this is one that we're going to focus on. Or, and we call this a big face maximal embedding. One face is as small as possible, the other is the largest possible. So it, it seemed like a natural maximal embedding to go after. Um, in fact, if we start with the minimal, you can make switches and using the adjacent change theorem, which says if you make the appropriate changes, you can combine these three faces into one and you keep doing that and you actually can end up with the maximal embedding where you have one face of size four and the remaining, um, and this can be obtained after seven switches. And this picture that I told you to think of before, we start with a minimal embedding and it just amounts to add seven handles to it to make it the maximal embedding, which is neat, I think. So we have, um, What's known is Mark Ungerman's work that any four connected graph can always be maximally embedded, thus QN can be maximally embedded. Um, it uses properties of graphs and does not demonstrate a maximal embedding. So what we have is a recursive method for which we find a maximal embedding, particularly the big face embedding. Uh, for that, we need a lemma. So I'm gonna skip through this. So basically what the lemma says is if you start with an embedding and you add a pair of edges, you can do it in such a way, everything can be controlled so that you don't change the genus of the surface at all. Okay. By making sure the rotation system is changed in a particular way, you can make sure the genus doesn't change. I am going to go over the sketch of proof um, in the interest of time. Okay, then the, the theorem says that Given QN, I can have two boundary walks, one size four, and the other remaining made up of the remaining edges. It's true for two. Uh, proof is by induction. So essentially we start with, it's true for QN minus one. We take two copies of QN minus one, and then we have that small face which we connect with a tube. Uh, outside this tube, we can use one of the results from before about switching. Now I take this vertex and I can switch in such a manner that's one, the bottom face and the back face combine to form one single face. Then I can switch along this other vertex to make the result of the previous operation, G, the front face and S naught combined to form G naught. And what I'm left with is this green, the four-sided thing, which is actually the small face for QN. Now this is not QN yet because we haven't connected. Remember these are copies of QN minus one. So we haven't connected all the edges, but we have the lemma. The lemma says that you can add missing edges in pairs without affecting the genus, which means that you can recursively construct the maximal big face embedding for QN. Okay, that's the end. So we define the ABC rotation system, basically construction of minimal embedding, maximal embeddings. Um, I wanted to make, so I could find the sequence of change for Q4 to go from minimal to maximal. Um, open question is like, how do you do that for every problem Q1? Is there a certain method of doing that? 
one thing that I didn't talk about is there is a particular um, embedding that I found which consisted of two earlier uh, which combined gave you the Q4. I could define it for Q4. Um, and yeah, what's the minimum number of changes to go from minimal to maximal? Um, what are the possible combination of face sizes that can be obtained um, for a particular graph? And an algorithm to see what the actual embedding looks like because drawing it is a real pain. And that's it.